flipping on that barbarian rage. Only shooting stars break the Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and I'm back with another Baldur's Gate Commander, Karlak. But this is not the paper Karlak. This is Karlak Raging Tiefling, who can specialize into Tiefling Berserker or Tiefling Zealot. For this deck, we are Boros Aggro. And in true Karlak style, we want to hit our opponent really, really fast, really, really hard, and smack him down Karlak style. This deck is a little unusual because Karlak herself is just kind of another good piece to the deck. She doesn't have that much synergy to her, but she is still powerful. Karlak Tiefling Zealot, which is the real goal, which is the thing you want to specialize into, is the commander in her ultimate form. And if you're not familiar with how a lot of these Baldur's Gate commanders work in Arena, you have the base card, in this case, Karlak Raging Tiefling. She's a 2-2 with First Strike. Awesome but she can specialize, which means you can transform her and bring her back to the battlefield if she happens to be in her graveyard. Now, this is, by the way, specific to her that she can have the Rage Beyond Death. It's an actual barbarian ability from Dungeons and Dragons. So you can pay six, discard a card from your hand, and depending on the color of that card, Karlak transforms. And if you discard a white card or a plane, she becomes the Tiefling Zealot, which gives you all of a sudden eight damage on board. For six mana, that's not bad because she comes out, she's a four, four. She brings a two, two knight, and then both of them get plus one, plus one and haste so they can swing at base. It's a lot of burst damage. And it also rewards you for keeping your commander in the graveyard, just in case you don't top deck any more power. But this deck is full of power. It's got some of the best one drops, two drops, three drops, and then it just kind of tapers off because you don't really need that much more. We're running really aggressive cards that boost of all, our, all of our creatures. We're running a little bit of direct burn, but not too much. We're really a creature based deck. And we use our creatures to go fast, hit base, and have a really fun time. This is a deck that plays quickly and it does allow you to play everybody's favorite sword, Embercleave. If you're wondering what are the key cards in this deck, I would say just the generally very strong aggressive cards. Cards like Ragavan, um, I really like Thalia in a deck like this. I think that Adeline and Flowering of the White Tree are really good more recent additions to this deck as well. And Blade Historian, I hovered over it before, is just a fantastic way to get in even more damage. But the deck itself is fairly flexible because it's just aggro and red and white are both very good at going fast so we're going to take this deck into the queue and we're gonna light them up going up against atali primal conqueror one of the two most popular commanders in the queue seriously there are so many atalis out there and this atali is the one that steals your cards when it enters the battlefield it casts the top spell of both players when it enters the battlefield which leads to a lot of good, good aggression. Juke! 1988, thank you so much for the sub. It also, if that wasn't enough, is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Trample that can become an 11-11 eleven, eleven with Indestructible, still having that Trample, that deals poison counters in addition to its other damage. Hello, nice Llanowar Loam Speaker you have there. It would be a shame if somebody exiled it. i just take that off the battlefield and keep swinging in with my Ash. Think that we want to trigger Ash's desire to party. I'm going to throw down Karlak before we go to combat. She's going to celebrate! I do like Ash. So for anybody who does not know, like, hey, what's going on with Ash? Ash is our resident party gal, but specifically she's supposed to be Cinderella with emphasis on Cinder. She doesn't disguise herself as a noble woman. She disguises herself as a knight, but she is still a peasant come to party. And she ends up dancing with Godric, who's also in this deck. And uh, oh, what a beautiful romance they have. Just a woman and a man who transforms into a dragon. Gosh, I wish that were me. Uh, I could throw down combat celebrant here. That's the really aggressive play. Or I could just attack in with the bivouac. I want to get this down so I can potentially take some extra combats next turn. 
Yeah, tale as old as time. Lady meets a hot dragon guy. God, I wish that were me. I do have a little bit of envy right there. Um, I'm gonna bring out the whack. They have that lair. We exert and attack. I'm actually most cool with Karlak dying. This would become a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, combat celebrant. If you do have two um two attack phases, you would get two triggers here. I just don't have two ways to trigger it. Would you like to kill the Karlak? Great. She'll come back next turn. And we party. We keep her in the grave. It doesn't really matter here. We swing it again for another three. And we take out the Satali before they could even manage to ramp. We killed their little elves and their halflings too. And then we swing in and kill them with an army of two twos. Okay, well, there's three threes now, but they started as two twos. Eluna, apex of wishes. What does she wish for? Well, very often it's Omni. Uh, there's two versions of this deck you see floating around. One of them is a mutate deck, cares about the mutate mechanic and tries to play a lot of cards that mutate. The other one, which is a lot more common, is actually just focused on getting out a non-land permanent from the deck. And to kind of cheat that, they only play one non-land permanent in the deck. It's Omniscience, which allows them to cast all their spells for free well, from hand. This means that they're going to be playing spells that make tokens and then mutating onto said tokens. Let's see if I can tax some of those spells. We're going to have Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, in disguise as Mina Harker here. A joint exploration! I mean, if you want to experiment with joints, I guess this is a safe place to do it. We're gonna go ahead and tax their spells, their non-creatures. Other things I could have done there. Luminarch, Aspirant, start buffing up our creatures. Ragavan, make a treasure, do some crime. Big fan of Ragavan. Big, big fan of Ragavan here. I'm gonna dash him out, or at least try to. It is time for the monkey! I'm going to enlist the help of Mina Harker. That way I get a boon for the next creature I cast. Same amount of damage, though. Oh, you had a sensor on top of your deck. Good for you. I have a Karlak. A Karlak with a plus one, plus one counter on her. Thought thou careth to counter my commander. That's fine. In fact, not only is she countered, she's going to stay in the graveyard. Because she is just as helpful there as anywhere else. Being able to specialize her from the grave means a lot of fast damage. But I do have to have six mana to get to that. I could also just use Sarah Baragon to bring her back. Because it shucks, it's good value, right? Let's bring out the Luminarch Aspirant. See if they have a counter spell now. Now that they have four mana, the like generic counter spells will all hit. And behold, a monkey! <laughs> Do you fear the monkey? It's okay if you do. Monkey is kind of scary. You go ook ook. It does go ook ook. All right, so that has been countered. Uh, I am going to throw the counter onto Thalia, but still enlist. So I'm getting the buff on a future card. Still swinging for five damage either way. Yeah, they, they hit the monkey with the Supreme William. Lorraine Revealed gets them an island. Not just a basic island, it could even get them a triome. There is a triome in these colors. There's one in all sets of colors. They went for steam vents. I mean, it's an island and a mountain. Shocked it and losing two life. You have four mana up. What are you going to do with it? Strangle Thalia! How dare you. 
They're also going to spite the aspirant. Fair. Blade Historian gets me the most damage on this board, and I'm going to take it. Attacking creatures I control have double strike. That's four damage to your face. I have another direct three damage here. Each of these is swinging for four and six, respectively. Ooh, a foretell. I'll never tell. Swinging in with these two. Saying GG. I'll say it right back. I assume this means they've got nothing to do to stop me. So they're going to gain some life. Ooh, they gain exactly the amount of life that I can deal with a lightning helix. GG. Oswald Fiddlebender. Is this deck going to be a Paradox Engine combo style deck? Almost certainly, but we'll take a look and see what they've got going. Oswald is so good at comboing because you can, if you find a way to untap him, cycle through tons and tons of artifacts in your deck, sacrificing them, getting bigger ones, and then continuing to do so. Oswald's great, has a lot of artifacts to hang out, and probably is being played with a lot of things that discount artifacts. I want to just play Karlak. Yeah, I'll just play Karlak, overholding the uh, Virtue and Fateful Absence this turn. Four mana. One, two, two! What are you going to use that other mana for? A soul partition. Okay, so they've exiled my commander. We don't move her to the command zone because she's essentially just already being taxed. But I will throw down Brutal Cathar to exile Oswald to try and slow them down on their big combo strategy. Yeah, she costs four. He's not doing that much. Pod. Well, yeah, he, he's a pod guy. Pod for artifacts, though. Turns out a lot of strong artifacts out there. They have five mana, and they're using Firemind Vessel to get two more. And they're gonna draw a card. What are you gonna do with that one extra mana? You got something you're doing with it? Tormod's Crypt? Nope. Thalia will cut them off if they're trying to do something with haste, but I haven't seen a haste enabler yet. Let's see if I can scry to something nice and tasty. The land. I'm actually fine with a land here. I could go squee to build up a wide board, but instead I think I'm going to go for Virtue of Loyalty, starting with Ardenvale Fealty. But I'm holding the Fateful Absence just in case they have, like, Swiftfoot Boots or something similar to speed up their strategy. Transmogrifying Wand. Oh, that lets them turn things into two fours. Behold! A knight! We got knights and we got fights. Bringing out Squee, Dubious Monarch! And swinging in with all my little buddies here. Going for that free block. And again, holding that fateful absence. You have so much mana! And a discount. What's the last card in your hand? Got some Ulamogs or something in there? Or just Oswald. Maybe Oswald's like a red herring. I'll take my removal. And 
shove it at Oswald. They have two mana up, so they could turn something into an ox. They would have had to do it at sorcery speed or just draw a card. Was it smoked or pickled herring? Smoked. I'm not that big on pickled herring. Virtue of loyalty will build up my damage faster, but face is the place. I'm gonna bring out Reckless Stormseeker and Thalia. Gonna give Thalia this buff. And as I mentioned before, Thalia will make their creatures enter tapped. Which is relevant here because it means that if Oswald enters tapped, even if he is given haste, it will be a lot harder for him to do something. Depopulate. All right, that's a board wipe. And Oswald returns! Looks like I've got enough to bring back Squee. One, two, three, four. And while I do have removal in hand, it can't hit Oswald. So I'm going to try to draw new removal using Mary. It is possible, by the way, that this turn is my last. Because, as I said before, Oswald likes to fiddle with artifacts. And those artifacts, ooh, they can do a lot. So I guess we'll find out. Hands off. I have no game actions I can take. They're playing a ring. Are you then sacrificing something? With our dear friend Oswald Fiddlebender. Sacrificing the three cost. Get something four cost. Ariette's Tempting Apple. Ooh, yummy. Apple untaps and gives haste to Oswald. Okay, that's some tech. Then sacrificing the five to get a six. And that six was Worm Coil Engine. Good news. Eowyn can exile the Worm Coil Engine. They can gain three life off the apple or make me lose three life. Okay, so they're just going to eat this. Yum, yum, yum. Eowyn's coming out. But don't worry, we actually have even more attackers. That's sorcery speed. It's not doing anything. No Paradox Engine. Could this be the fairest fiddlebender in all the land? Maybe. Maybe it is. GG, yay, 2727. Domri, Anarch of Bolas. Domri gives you mana, gives you fights, and increases the power of all your creatures. Also, if you're the kind of person who absolutely hates counter spells, Domri's a great commander to have because his plus ability makes your creatures uncounterable, which I have no problem with that. I also am a person who likes ways to get around counter spells. This Domri is Gruul Aggro. And I expect to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe Ooh, with some little guys like this. Do I want to Swords the Halfling? No, I want to do Crime. Robber of the Rich swinging! It was a land. Robber of the Rich is one of my favorite cards. I just really like getting card advantage by taking my opponent's cards. It's so good. This is also like a two mana two two with haste and a really good series of abilities. Occasionally you also can like leave it back for that nice, nice reach. It can block a dragon once. And that's all that matters, right? Right. I'm gonna swing in again with Robber of the Rich. Will they double block or just single block? Okay, cool. So that's what I wanted. They double blocked, which gives me the opportunity to take out Karizev and the Halfling in one go. Carlax coming out. 2-2 two, two for strike. Jar Loyal Bodyguard helps defend your legends. And I got legends worth defending too. I'm gonna swing in here with just Robber of the Rich and Tajik. Karlak can stay back. They're going for the trade. Robber of the Rich and Hajar. Unless. Unless. 
Do you have a bit of removal here? Tyvar stand, he becomes indestructible. A rampaging raptor! It's got haste. But it looks like they're leaving it back. Rampaging raptor, by the way, kind of like a questing beast. Removes counters from planeswalkers and battles. Actually deals the damage to it, but yeah, same idea. It's also, frustratingly, a little bit bigger than the other stuff I have on the board. So we're going to use Kellen's other ability here to grab some removal. Ossification! Oh, we love Kellen. I have a separate Kellen deck if you ever want to check that out. We exile the Rampaging Raptor. Now I'm going to swing in with these two. This is going to mentor Karlak. She gets a plus one, plus one counter. And something I should have also mentioned about Tajik while he's out on the battlefield is he prevents damage from being dealt to anything other than himself from fights. So that minus two, if they were to, for example, use the minus two ability and try to fight Karlak, no damage would be dealt. Oh, all right, Domri. I see what's going on here. Uh, Tajik can also be given first strike, which means that we're in a pretty good spot here to attack in. Uh, I could also just give everybody double strike. I like that even more. Here comes the Blade Historian. Attacking creatures I control have double strike. And those two double strikers are going to swing right at Domri, take him off the battlefield, and sentiment me as the player in the lead. GG Domri. Brazilax is mono blue, hit you in the face and bounce things back into hand. Both their things and yours. Brazilax is um a kind of cool design, but because there's only so many curiosity type effects, things that will help you draw or get other things when your creatures deal combat damage to an opponent. These decks typically have quite a few counter spells, and I don't blame them for having the counter spells. I'm just a little fussy hussy who says, wah, 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 I wish all my spells resolved. And I will do my best to get this spell to resolve and not get bounced back into my hand right away. Lots of unblockable and good, um evasive creatures like Fairy Seer. Go great with Grazalax. I could technically ossify it, but I'd rather wait for Grazalax. One, two. Witness protection. All right, so you become a 2-2 two -two and you stay a 2-2. Two -two. Let's... I destroy that witness protection. I currently don't have a way to do that in hand. I get down Adeline. Build up my board and swing in ferociously. What would I like copies of? Probably copies of my legitimate business person. But for now, we aggro. Everybody swing in! Adeline is a very respected businesswoman. She only works with other respectable business people. Yeah, we, we were able to just build up this board so fast. Veraldic Banner naming blue is going to get them more damage in the air. Or more blocking power because we are swinging in fast and hard. Uh, ossification lets me remove a blocker. I'm going to do that. And I'll hit you, the Fairy Seer. And then I'm going to sacrifice a treasure to play Goblin Morale Surgeant. This is an alchemy card. The least, um... I want to see Dominaria? Because it was Enlist. Yeah, Dominaria United. Um, we can enlist with it. It doesn't really make a difference, though. Yeah, I'll enlist. I'm going to enlist my legitimate business. No, I'm going to enlist this. Uh, yeah, and let's enlist the legitimate business person. They can only block one thing. And the biggest thing to block is Adeline. This way I can get another copy of the legitimate business person in my deck. They're saying GG. Good game. Also had one extra damage off Lannery. If we needed it, which we didn't. For a 
Born Clex with reach. This is the Born Clex that can turn into a saga, gets you two forests into your hand, and gets creatures, makes them bigger, and then lets them fight. Born Clex is really good and usually relies on a lot of good ramp strategies. Let's see if they keep. They did. Let's throw down our Esper Sentinel. Now, there's probably a mix of creature and non-creature ramp in their deck, but I imagine that their strategy overall is creatures. Big stompy creatures. Big green stompy creatures. I'll attack in with my Esper Sentinel and get down Karlak. Good morning, Pancake Master, and thank you for the six-month resub. Speaking of pancakes, morning, Amy. today's stream, though not necessarily this video, is sponsored by IHOP. I get the coolest sponsors. Oh, we got to draw a card. That's awesome. Um, Let's destroy some ramp. Either the Cold Steel Heart or the Utopia Sprawl. I'm going to hit the heart. You gotta have heart. Oh, I have to have heart. My opponent's not allowed to have heart. Carlac wants that heart. She would, she wouldn't mind having a cold heart instead of a very fiery heart. You have three mana, maybe four. What you got for me? If they have another land in hand, they could have been like lining up to play Vorinclex this next turn. Um, I think that we're in a pretty decent spot. I think the next things I would want to do are actually get out Kellen, play Firing the White Tree to buff up especially my legends. And an Angel Fire Ignition to get even more damage on the double strike. Are you roping me? Barnclex, are you roping me? Come on, bro. What are you doing? There we go. All right, we're back in the game. Uh, <laughs> Amy's out here just sassafrazzing. Kellen and killing. I'm actually going to uh, let both of us draw. I was going to say, I have a good chance of hitting a one drop. And there it is. You have to destroy the ramp when you're up against green. Otherwise, they just like crater hoof behemoth. I say this as a green player. Calculating. Look, I even gave you another chance at drawing a land. Yeah, always bolt the bird is a perfect philosophy of why you gotta destroy the ramp. Is it a rope or a disconnect? It's definitely a rope, because they passed through uh, right at the end of it on that last turn. Well, that's fine. You guys got to see Karlak in action, doing face smashy goodness. Next turn, you know, we're just gonna lay out a little bit of extra damage, angel fire ignition. Flowering of the White Tree. Oh, so much good damage to have. I, I'd say good game, but you know. Salt Rope. You see that? You see that last second pass? Get over here! Okay, it was slightly overkill, but totally worth it. Res Soto playing Prime Speaker Vanifar. Oh, another pod style commander. Vanifar turns creatures into bigger creatures, creatures of one mana value higher than the one sacrifice. Uh, Vanifar is oftentimes able to combo out going from two to three to four to five to six to seven mana, getting out whatever it is they want to. Swing in with my recruitment officer. I don't have a way to stop this ramp. But next turn, I might be able to with a Brutal Cathar. Yeah, Vanifar is an interesting commander. She's very strong if the deck is built to be highly competitive. And if you're playing EDH, specifically commander, there are some wombo combos you can do with Vanifar. If you are sitting down at a table and somebody just breaks out Vanifar as their commander, you might be in for a really tough game. Get this land before it comes in untapped. I'm gonna remove one of these pieces of ramp. Uh, I think I'll hit halfling. This is the potential to tap for more mana. 
and I, it's not like I care as much about the counter spells. The big thing is, this is an 0-2, this is a 1-2, and I want to hit face. Prime Speaker, Vanifar. Yeah, if they play an intruder alarm, we know we're in trouble. Passing back the turn, since Vanifar is a little bit too big for us. This will at least make their lands come in tap, while Blossoms draws them a card. Are they going to turn that Wall of Blossoms into something bigger, better, faster, stronger? A three drop, such as... There's a lot of good tech three drops, like Reclamation Sage, that destroy uh, artifact and enchantments. There's ones that bounce creatures in blue, or non... I guess just non-land cards. Or they could go for the untapper. So by the way, there is an untapper at two. Um, it is the little blue artifact from Eldraine. Thrones of Eldraine, the first one. Uh, at four, there's another untap. At five, there's a way to clone something from your graveyard to untap. Hi, Breaching Hippocamp. It's a horsefish. Corridor monitor. Yes, that's the two drop. Each time they do this, by the way, they do have to search through their library to find the card. It only shows them the cards that are valid, but it's still like frustrating to have to be like, okay, where's the one that I want? Oh, they're going biogenic ooze. Uh, by the way, she's an ooze. That means she'll get plus one, plus one counters. Thankfully, these all come in tapped. Thank you, Thalia. We love you, Thalia. I'll play these run em up ruins. And Illuminar Gasprint. I like buffing up my first striker to hopefully break through that line over time. Swing in with everything. First strike. Regular, they're down to nine. We have two damage on the back line here. I could have also played the Sunbaked Canyon here to sacrifice it, draw a card, since we're kind of running out of gas. Admittedly, I can throw Karlak in as like a sacrifice to get her back and do that big buff. As long as I have a planes or white card in my hand to discard. Also need six mana. Champion of Wits. Personally, I'm witless. They draw two, discard two, and they could sacrifice this to get up to a four drop again. They dropped Mole Drifter and Hornet Queen, milady. I do like them uh, using these big threats here. Cool, so they just did a spark double to make another ooze, so these will get two plus one plus one counters instead of just one. Ooh, the hive. Feeling alive with that hive. I am feeling a swing with everything here. Come at me, bro! Spreading out my damage as best as I can. They now die to a bolt! But I don't have a bolt. I only have a shock. So I'm going to play Skrelv's Hive. Sacrifice my land. Oh, the Swords to Plowshares. I don't want them to gain life, but I might need to do this. Hello, Double Ooze. 
I'm not dead yet to these oozes because of the swords to plowshare. Whirl a rogue. Sacrificing that nice enter the battlefield, baby. Get a five drop. Erg Tusk! Ah, oh, that gains them life too! They can't do a lot of damage here. So they had a, um, off from one lethal swing, or lethal if they decided to, uh, incubate, that we would have had to react with the swords to plowshares. I'll lose one from the Skrelf's Hive. Well, I guess, no, it would have been lethal without those. Mana Tithe. Oof. Doesn't quite get me there. So we'll get the damage in that we can. Specializing from the battlefield. Dropping the Mana Tithe. And swinging in with all my little buddies. Is it enough? I mean... It would have been if this guy wasn't here. But sometimes your opponents just gain five life. And there's nothing you can do about it. Good game. Also, it feels wrong to specialize her from the battlefield. You're supposed to specialize from the graveyard. GG. Now take your final oozy swing. I love the goop. It's good, goop. Ooh, I like the incubation druid is coming in too for a grand total of zero damage. The real space bar flunge. GG Risotto. Oh, man, now I'm hungry for risotto. Zergo and Ojatai, two of Tarkir's orcs and dragons coming together to hit me in the face really fast, really hard, and get card advantage while doing so. It's a good commander, and it's a commander in Jeskai colors, which means it has access to board wipes and counter spells and burn all at the same time. Zergo and Ojatai is a kind of scary commander to go against because of that it can just keep coming out, hitting you in the face, going back into hand, wiping the board. They're saying hi. Hi. This is still a keepable hand because it has a curve. We've got one, two, and then one of those for three. Recruitment officer. Coming down with a two-one. They search for his canta. Ah! Somebody... Somebody has a packed indication. Did you see how it held for a second there? I cast a spell and hmm, somebody has a counter spell that costs zero to cast, but makes you play five the next turn. Neat. At least we've got some damage here. Uh, I could either go for Tajik or Squee. Uh, I like Tajik here to buff up another one of my creatures and also prevent burn-based damage on anything except for Tajik. Tajik is countered. But thankfully, they did have to pay one life to do that. They threw an invasion of Gobakan into the graveyard. There was also a memory lapse in the grave. Sure. Squee, dubious monarch. Even if it gets countered, eventually it can come back from the grave. Fateful absence on the recruitment officer. Okay, we're swinging in. And Usher of the Fallen. Laying out all our damage as fast as we can. Land comes in tapped. Ooh, I want to actually play a land first here. Just in case they have something that taxes for two. Reckless Storm Seeker comes in, gives herself haste. We swing in. They're saying, good game. I don't mean to boast, but our deck does do a lot of damage. Yuck, 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 yuck. Nobody? No? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, even if they have a board wipe, we do bring back a lot of damage from the graveyard. Uh, they have two up here. 
Uh, I guess we're going to... Shock! Specialize! And... Swing! GG, Zergo and Ojitai! Crucius Titan of the Waves. This is the nerfed Crucius, which means that he only has one life. But he's still plenty strong because he makes you treasure and he helps you find larger or smaller things, depending on what mode you choose. They're saying hello. Hi! Crucius is um, very great with Reanimator, especially because you can discard cards to set up to bring them back. Okay, Ashnod, I will light her up. I played this Sunbaked Canyon just in case I wanted Patriarch's Humiliation. Also felt like I'm probably going to want this. I don't mind dealing damage to myself. Here comes Karlac. Always nice to have a two drop on curve, right? Rohirrim Lancer, what do you do? You die, the ring tempts you. Hmm. Oh, that's a lot of... Oh, wait, is this the version of the deck that's all one drops? CGB made a version like this. So you can always discard to tutor for a specific high cost card. Oh, golly. Dragon Skull Summit comes in tapped, so Crucius is not coming into play right now. What could they be looking to tutor for? Lightning Bolt takes out my werewolf. No, ah, woo. What's the high cost card? It depends on the version of the deck. Um, at this point, I couldn't tell you. Not going to discard, but probably next turn. Crucius comes down, we'll blast him. Oh. Well, those are my thoughts. Yeah, you can seize them. They're right there. Taking out AON. My exiling removal. Oops. Oh, I think they realized after that Patriarch's humiliation would be able to kill um Crucius. Eowyn is good hasty damage, though, and can exile something. Before they go to end step, we blast him! Saying oops again? Uh, sorry? Bring out the Brutal Cathar, exile the Evolved Sleeper. Swing in with these. I will discard that Aurelia to draw fresh two new cards. We got a whack. And Kellen! Bivouac! Spiteful Hexmage turns a 1 1 into a 1 1 because it curses them. Uh, but it also is a 1 mana 3 2. Bivouac is a fun word. Is a bivouac just a kind of ox? I assume so. And a smitten sword. Hey, wait a minute. That costs two, not one. Never mind, y'all. It's not that version of the deck. I don't know what this is. A bivouac is a camp. It's like a tent. Oh, I thought it was referring to this. Shows what I know, right? What can I specialize into? Damage. X plus X. I like plus X plus X. Yes, please. Nice. The adventure does cost one. Yeah, but the actual, like, mana value of the spell is two. I guess this is just like a Rakdos Agro Crucius deck. 
Oh, it gets used in the military. Cool. Uh, GG, Flobin. I guess we're almost dead. Oh, they gained life. All right, so they're not dead yet. We didn't cast anything, so now this is nighttime. We do have a little guy we can drop out here. Uh-oh. So the real lesson here is that mana confluence shouldn't be in two color decks that don't care about you dealing damage to yourself. Shatterfang, Squirrel General, the squirrel that makes more squirrels whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control. It also has the ability to kill things, giving plus X minus X by sacrificing squirrels, which means my one toughness creatures like this and this aren't very safe when this squirrel's around. I expect to see a lot of sacrifice and squirrel brewing. Well, there's the sacrifice. It also makes tokens. Bit of one, bit of two. We could hit it with you. I think I'd rather get down Lunark Aspirant. I'm gonna have her buff herself and protect by the uh, Skrelv. This way I feel like I'm leading into a good invasion of Gobacon and flipping it over. Hey, Arcane Signet! Do I draw land? I don't draw land. Poison tip archer. Okay, so just something that rewards you for having tokens. Nothing that makes tokens. Uh, in that case, since there's no removal in hand, I'm going to attack Skrelv at base. An aspirant at the invasion of Gobacon. This will flip over. This will protect my two creatures and give them each plus one plus one counters. They have four mana. That's more than enough for this Chatterfang. Yeah, this is the only token maker they have, but they need creatures to sacrifice to get it to work. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm still on two mana, but... I think we just take out Chatterfang. <laughs> if they play him again next turn, they could sacrifice him in response to the Witch's Oven. Since sacrificing a creature is part of the cost here, Chatterfang does not see that food get made. Playing good game. I mean, I'm the one on two mana, but yeah, we got a lot of good two drops. GG. Nickel Bolas the Ravager. Hello, Nicky V. This is the Nickel Bolas that makes you discard when he enters the battlefield. He's also a flying 4-4 four, four dragon who transforms into a pesky planeswalker. This hand is okay. I do have a bolt, and I have the ability to bolt myself. Uh, paying three life to get down this Shatter Skull Smashing. But of the two decks here, I am the aggro deck. So there's a good chance I will be using this Play With Fire to hit their face to scry to try and find some better cards, especially lands. That's a Boromir. He's awesome, but I really want lands. See? land. Now all I need is another white source and we get down Flowering of the White Tree. Innocent Blood. Karlak is dead. Um, I'm going to leave her in the graveyard because we have other threats in this deck and we actually have a really cool one right here. Loran. Loran's cool because she's going to destroy Search for his Kanta. No more surveilling in your upkeep, Grover. Got some nice four drops, too. Uh, Aon, who can exile Nicol Bolas. And Chandra, who can kill with a minus three. Swamp cycling. Cool swamp. It's not just the swamp. It's everything. I did not get a land. I can try and draw one. I think that that's actually a pretty fair move here. Bam! Found a land. Try and get down a non-creature threat here. Probably just gets countered though. Yep, counter spell. I was also thinking Skrelv's Hive and a Lightning Bolt. Not bad. 
also lets me hold up Fateful Absence. Right now, Lightning Bolt, I think, is my most droppable card. Flowering of the White Tree. Protect my Loran just a little bit. Give her Ward 1. And also a plus 2, plus 1 buff. Going to have each of us draw. Gives me more fuel to discard. And I was also looking for a land. Plague Crafter! I can technically bolt that to make them discard. I don't think I need to. We lose our creature. Okay. I need six lands to get Karlak out of hell! She needs to go into her barbarian rage. Hello? You gonna destroy my land? Why are you looking at that? Die, goblin! Ha ha! A land! Oh, great glorious lands! I am going to play Skrull's Hive and Skrelv! Now I've got my fateful absence and my virtue of loyalty ready to rumble. Hello, I am just a mighty might. I'm a Skrelv gamer. I'm such a Skrelv gamer. One, two, three, four. You're tapping so carefully, leaving up perfect counterspell mana. I wonder why. <laughs> I'll drop the Fateful Absence. Now I imagine this will be what gets countered. Virtue of Loyalty? The Arden Vale Fealty? Wash away. We make another mighty might. And we play Eowyn! Ayy! A win! Oh! Eowyn got buffed, so she was bigger than Nicol Bolas. I was like, why didn't she exile? R.I.P. Skrelv. You died for my sins. Yeah, the, uh, the buff from Flowering of the White Tree meant that we didn't exile Bolas, and I had already pressed spacebar. Mm-mm-mm. Suffering from success, exactly. Uh, Nickel Bolas can now flipple Bolas. He goes, whoosh! Did you put any mighty creatures in your graveyard? Like this one and this one? No, oh, there's gonna blast Eowyn. A knight. Mm, I can bring back Karlak, but she would be in red. That is only six, seven, eight damage. And a gray. Five at face, two at bolus. You cannot stop me. Oh, we already played our land, right? Neither of these uh, can be discarded to go into white. Well, we could specialize Ambergris into red. She deals more damage based on the number of cards you've discarded. And for white, you buff up all your creatures. Multiple specialized cards. I drew some cards. Ah, <laughs> sorry, you were looking at my thoughts. That's funny, I don't have those. Special Angel Rise was not going to. 
because it does not give these haste. No thoughts? Head empty? Oh yeah, this head's about to be real empty. Putting on full control as I switch into attack mode! And then we leave it to Beaver. Discarding all zero cards in my hand. In order to draw an extra two, you'll want to face. I mean, she's 14 on her own. I love how Carlac is like, you, you could have gotten lethal with me too. Yeah, but Ambergree was here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed Carlac's Brawl Stars. I do wish that we had the paper version of Carlac and Arena, but we don't, and that's fine. If you're looking for the deck list, it is in the description of the video. If you are looking to find me and my stream, come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I hope you liked Hit and Face with Barbarian Rage. This Carlac is pretty dang cool, isn't she? I really like the paper version of her, but you know, this one's fine too. Thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.